Knipe River Flint, which comes from North Dakota. So we've got these materials that are coming from different areas and they're showing up here. My suspicion is because of the site locality, where it's located, how big it is, it's just such a really great area. Central it, area. It would have been very place. central, I think, yeah. to a lot of mm -hmm. to a lot of people. And I think they would have had great fishing, uh, a lot of game, fresh water. Mm -hmm. It only makes sense that this could have been some kind of, uh, you know, a gathering place. You can see we've got a huge block excavation here, uh, what we call a block excavation, where we've opened up a large area. Yeah. And we've gotten a lot of, you know, what we call uh, camp or habitation tools, like scrapers, drills, um, knives, uh, what we call uh, bifaces. That's just a rock that's been chipped on either side to create a sharp edge for, for cutting. Um, and then uh, the most interesting thing is the, uh, the basis of those projectile points. We're finding, we found probably 60 or 70 here. So I think what's going on is they're going out hunting, breaking the projectile point during the hunt. They're coming back here, taking the base off and putting a new projectile oh, point on and then heading back out to hunt or whatnot. So um, that's sort of my preliminary yeah. interpretations yeah. of what's going on based on what we've got. Uh, but uh, it's just, I mean, this is just a, I, <laughs> for me <laughs> as an archeologist, this is like, you know, hitting the jackpot right. because uh, I'll never dig a site like this again because it's just, I mean, mm -hmm. we found amethyst. Um, we could probably open up our own shop and sell amethyst. Um, hmm. We wouldn't. But uh, <laughs> what I think they're doing is, uh, is yeah, <laughs> no, no. I think I think they're they're using the amethyst, the quartz underneath the amethyst for for tools because they would have been very familiar with quartz. Um, although I'm sure they would have, you know, I'm sure the amethyst would have looked pretty and they might have used it as jewelry and stuff. There's just so much of it. it I don't think it would necessarily be considered like a sacred or a religious precious, thing. Yeah. yeah, or a precious type thing because. Usually in order to call something that rare, it would have to be a rare thing, but we're just finding so much of it that, um, and it's, and it's not too far away. I think just over to the east there, there's, um, there's a bunch there that you can find and then as well as to the west. So, I mean, it, it would have been not too hard to get. And like I said, we've got two sites about a kilometer and a half that way, uh, called the woodpecker sites, um, not as big. But I think still fairly significant because of the age. Um, so is that right on the right, right away too, Dave? While you yep. guys are studying it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, like I said, we um, part of our contract was to develop a model <coughs> to identify these types of sites. How can how can we identify them before this yep. type of situation? Right. So we tested the model in between these two sites and found another site. So, um, there's, like I said, they're twinning the highway to Manitoba. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so, how many sites are between here and there? God yeah. only knows, but, you know, just keep that in mind because yeah. they're going to be twinning the highway to Manitoba. And that'll probably, I think, Kenora to Manitoba is probably the next big stint. So what are you doing for the next five years? I'm probably <laughs> going to be bidding on these projects. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Call you uh, Dr. Jones. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Indiana Jones. <laughs> um, so if this site, you said it goes further back, but you're only contracted to take this. Yeah, we can't go beyond there. It just remains untouched. So out of personal curiosity, you've never gone over the hill Oh, there, sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't tell MTO you that, because I think that's private there, property. Though, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have sneaking suspicion that the, the, uh, the taconite that they're finding here is probably coming just beyond like there's a hill there which is I think just an outcrop of rock and I think somewhere beyond that is where they're getting the taconite. I know you can find taconite all along the river. Um, what would it be? Anything and everything. Taconite, um, because they were coming into this area they didn't know what was available so they found taconite because it was such a, a readily available source and 
they used it yeah, for everything. Um, yeah. Projectile points, here. scrapers, mm -hmm. anything not, not they needed. They no, I think we'd be um, here yeah, it right? would. Yeah. To be honest with you, taconite's the worst material to make anything out of. And the fact that they were able to make stuff out of it is a testament to how good they were at what they did. And I always think, you know, we need something like a fork or a knife. We go to Walmart to buy it. They had to make, or, I mean, they had to make it in order to survive. So the fact that they were able to make such beautiful things from taconite is just, it's a testament to how good they were at working stone. Um, but it wasn't until later where they found cherts and other kinds of rock to make, to make projectile points with that they just, they stopped using taconite. So when we do find taconite, we know it's from a certain time frame because um, it was just only sort of used from the first peoples that came into the area. And then once people realized there was better stuff to use, they just <laughs> stopped Walmart. using yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Went to Walmart. So when you talk about date, are you looking at? Um, I, I've average. been using a 9,000 year date yeah. as, uh, as um, okay.